That's the second hawk. Two hawks. Hawk, hawk. Hawk, hawk. A strike and he's sitting down. Two hawks, intent on mating, most likely, and they're they're giving it their all, and the, and the hawks can't be made to flee by the by the ravens today. But the ravens are trying. At least the hawks are down this way instead of up to the south. Pretty fancy aerial display. Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I am of the stars. I uh, was asked on the psychic plane the other day why it is that I don't feel my heart chakra as much as I used to. Why I concentrate on the kundalini energy and uh, stabilizing my entire energy field instead of mainly feeling my heart. And it took me a while to remember. I remember in the old days, in the last solar maximum, I felt my heart energy very, very strongly all the time. It felt wonderful. It, it felt great. The problem there today is that there were three large hawks and only three ravens. And uh, it's a, mostly a standoff today. Uh, one raven went down. That's a hawk back there. And uh, there were, then there were two ravens, one hawk high, high up, and two hawks engaging in parrying. And so uh, I think the, the thing to do today is just to stand off and, and not a route for the, for the ravens. That's what I think they're trying to accomplish right now. And I will wish them well. I hope they'll do well. You know, we, we yogis are a lot like the ravens, and the spiritual adepts who attempt to control other people are, are right like the hawks. You know, they're stronger, they're fiercer, they're, they're, they're not as sociable, not as socially oriented. They, they spend a lot of their time alone, but sometimes in order to really, really cream a, a raven clan, they get, they get together for a while and, and just decimate them, you know, like seems to have happened in, with my raven clan over here, which now consists of three, uh, three ravens. Anyway, so I'm talking from the point of view of a yogi right now, and I'm saying over the years, in the last um, 20, 24 years, I've had to confront a number of spiritual adept groups and uh, I'd like to explain first that in India there are all kinds of spiritual groups there's a spiritual group with a guru for every possible um, occupation on earth including occupations like um, assassinating people uh, like murder clans and crime cl clans and and everything in between that and and the heart chakra sorts of sorts of groups. There's gurus for each of these. Then I heard there's, for instance, well-respected gurus in India that they take unto themselves very young wives in remote areas and then murder the wives to feed their children, you know. Yet they're gurus, yet they're greatly respected in their communities. And their ways are so very different from our own, don't you know? Their culture is completely different. It's hard to understand how very different the values are there in those remote places of India than they are here. And so there's a, there's a guru to do with, uh, in the old times, with assailing travelers on, uh, by wells in travels in India. They would assault them psychically and then they would murder them. And they had a guru that went to jail. <laughs> then there's, there's gurus for all kinds of forms of work. Y you might say the master craftsman of each form of work. And it makes sense that because many people on earth 
which use many paths and many occupations and many ways of relating to God. And it makes sense that each of them should have a guru, a guru in that particular occupation or path to God, you know. There's all kinds of people and all kinds of gurus. Anyway, to get back to, to what I was facing back then, I ran into some uh, spiritual groups that specialize in murdering women for cash. And they had a particular way about them. They had a way of concentrating on their third eye point consciously. But to do this, they, they severed the energy at their heart chakra through various means, which I've spoken of previously. And what this did was it allowed their unconscious minds, their gut brains, and the energies of these to run rampant when they slept. So when they slept, their sexual drive, which otherwise might not be expressed because they, they're celibate, uh, reached out to their intended victims and caused psychic rape. Day and night this would happen. Sometimes they would do it on purpose. There would be people that, that really intended to hurt uh, the women victims in this way, and there would be others that only did it in their sleep. And in the meantime, they would use the third eye point uh, for mind controlling the women that they intended to murder. Could be a long honored technique in Indian uh, lore for all I know. So to get back to this group, this, one of these groups that I was facing, and actually this practice spread like a samskara to other groups too, you could call it a psychic trick. Uh, it could be greatly valued by a particular spiritual group and then transmitted to another spiritual group. And so what was happening was my sense of of these spiritual adepts was that they had very, very strong third eye points, but adulterated with the dark notion that they would be used to mind control and overpower other people for the sake of uh, gain, personal gain. They rationalized this by saying it was really not their own gain. It was the gain of the group, which was a worthy spiritual group. And you know, Every human being, me included, is always full of rationalizations all the time. So I don't, I don't blame them for this, you know. Uh, but any more than I blame myself. But, but on the other hand, it was me they had in mind. It felt like at that time. Okay, I don't like to name names, especially in assassination groups, because they might want to get even with me. <laughs> and so, as myself, I'm thinking about here, and and it and it's. A, common theme in many, many spiritual groups uh, around the world to do this kind of thing, to, to prey upon the weak members of their congregation, to prey upon, um, say, wealthy women or sometimes children, you know, to take advantage of children. You just never know just because it's a spiritual group. It's full of people and those people are very diverse with very diverse motives and intentions. It might be greed, it might be satisfaction of overwhelming sexual desire. It might be something in incredibly holy, you know, depending on the group and on the person. Anyway, so what was happening was that they would use their, their third eye points, their great mental abilities, to influence my heart to open up by saying, you will love me, you will love me, you love me very much, right? And I would get to thinking, for some reason I would think that meant they lo loved me, but they didn't. You know, they didn't. They, they engaged in astral rape, which was interpreted by my heart as being love, when in fact what they were doing was exercising their third eye points to mind control me. Now, I'm here to tell you this happens to some men as well, that they are used by the dark. They are used by black magic people. They are used by mind controllers in the same manner. Their heart chakras are opened up very wide because they are mind controlled into it. Okay, and their sexual chakras may be very open too. So a lot of women may love them because of their sexual chakras and their open hearts, but in fact their, their, their psychic energy is, um, is diluted with darkness because of the mind control of spiritual adepts and uh, sorcerers and black magicers all over Earth. They're very prevalent all over Earth. Everywhere you go, you find them. I've traveled quite a few places looking for some place where there aren't any. And in the most idyllic places on Earth, like in Eureka, California, 
I went, there were three, you know, overlording that whole place. There's nothing I could do. You know, there was a lot of trouble there in the most idyllic of places, yet the sea breezes blew in, the wonderful restorative uh, features of the water elementals came through and the breezes brought in the elementals of the air. It was a very healthful place, but the mind was imperiled by the presence of three very great sorcerers there, two men and one wo woman, who, who were the overlords of that place. That was a big disappointment to me because I love Eureka. Well, that's just an example. Sometimes it may seem to you that you have to move away from where you are to someplace else because it seems so good and in fact it's a lot worse. <laughs> so I'm here to tell you this is the thing. This is why I recommend the Kundalini Yoga in the Mastering the Mind series. I recommend it because it works very quickly. Okay, if you're able to do it, it works very quickly in clearing the, the dark spells and the curses from your entire energy field. Within an hour you can do that. And if you repeat for about a half hour every day, it'll keep you clear for the rest of your life. Then you can begin to open your heart then you will be safe to open your heart, but only after all that clears away, okay? Uh, uh, I hope, I hope whoever it is that feels guilty about this, whoever it may be, realizes that I'm not pinpointing only them because I have noticed it in many, many spiritual groups. Hindu, Christian, Muslim, uh, the ruling religion of Utah. I don't know about other groups, you know, but that's enough to know that it's very prevalent on earth and it's cross faith, okay? So we all have to watch out for this, for being made sacrificial victims in the name of a religion. We have the right and the responsibility as light workers to retain form in this reality. That's our job. There's nothing that we can do here unless we retain physical form. God bless you all and keep you safe and be with you through all your days in love, light, and joy. This is Alice B. Claggett. I'm of the stars. And so are you. See you all at my website, Awakening with Planet Earth. HTTPS colon slash slash awakening with planet earth dot com. If you want to know about Mastering the Mind, search for Mastering the Mind. It's a video series on that website. Don't go to YouTube because I'm retiring that series on YouTube. See you there.